Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Google Search Jobs webinar. Uh, this is Matilda. I'm the marketing executive at Ramstead Search Rate. And today I'm joined by Peter Toplet and Francesca Campalani. Peter is our recruitment strategist and research manager for EMEA. And Francesca is our employer branding, sourcing, and recruitment marketing director, EMEA. Francesca and Peter will be taking us through what Google for Jobs means for all of us how it is really changing the way candidates look for jobs, and how organizations can take advantage of this feature to reach out to the right candidates faster. Uh, a couple of technicalities right before we start. So everyone is muted. We're muting everyone on entry. In case you have questions, please just pop them in the chat box. Those will be answered as we go and at the end of the session too. Thank you so much. Peter, Francesca, over to you. Thank you so much, Matilda. Um, so, hello everybody, Francesca here. As Matilda said, uh, said earlier, uh, I lead uh, the talent attraction function, so all the recruitment marketing and sourcing and research and everything, that it's really useful for, for recruitment because it really creates the pipeline and the funnel for then recruitment to work on it. And this is a little bit more about us, but we are not here to talk about us. And uh, I've always included, I've also included slides on uh, Roundstar and what my team does, but I'm not going to talk about it because we are here really to support you in understanding better and using Google for Job, Job Ads, uh, and in general, understand how all of these links together. So I'm going to skip those. I'm going just to spend one second on this uh, uh, slide. So every year, uh, uh, Rasa Sosra does a very big uh, talent trends report, interviewing uh, hundreds of people and uh, all of the companies we work with and beyond. And I just wanted to tell you that in mid-March, there will be another webinar going through in details uh, uh, all of these talent trends. And there are a couple of these talent trends that are quite uh, are interesting uh, within the Google for Job subject. So, you know, one of the trends is that HR is really investing in, uh, in, uh, in technology to access better talent, to identify passive candidates, to consolidate uh, data. So really, sometimes uh, instead of investing a lot of money on every technology possible on the market, it's better to understand what is already available and nearly for free, and you can really leverage that and then integrate it with all of your other technologies. So, that's, you know, especially for me, I'm passionate about technology, but it should be done because it's needed and leveraging everything that is out. So Google for Job will really help you with that. And then another trend, which is trend number 10, but it's quite common sense. You know, the more candidates are, are used to live in a digital world, the more they want the same experience when they get identified, selected, so really leveraging technology and giving a smooth candidate experience, I think it's one of the most critical points. And again, I'm highlighting these two trends just because they are relevant to the discussion we're going to have in a second. So having said that, the, the journey, we have we've designed this presentation not to take the whole hour at all, because what we are trying to do is just to run through every element that could be important for you and then open up uh, 20 question or observation or, or feedback or experience that you have. So what we're going to do is really to explore what is it, and we're going to do it in a way that can help you to understand it and use it and leverage it better, but also how to explain it to your business, to your stakeholders, to your recruiters, or to your teams, so really trying and support from an holistic point of view. What is under the hood? So what are the secrets? And we will go a little bit geeky on this point, but right. uh, just to really help you understand the science behind, because it's always very nice, even if you're not going to be involved with the science, it's good to understand it when you speak to your stakeholders. And then a little bit of, uh, of really a focus on uh, your job adverts. So that it's something everybody should do beyond Google for Jobs. So really focus on your biggest marketing asset. And then again, opening the floor to questions. 
having said that, I'll mute myself and give uh, and pass uh, the word to Peter that will start uh, and introduce you in the journey of Google for Jobs. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So what is Google for Jobs and how would it impact you? Well, before I dive again into what Google for Jobs actually is, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a candidate and think about how a regular job seeker finds out about job opportunities. Well, you could be referred for the job. You can get to know about the job through print, outdoor, or broadcast ads. You can do your own research by going on the career sites of companies and then finding the vacancy list there. A very popular option would be job boards such as Total Jobs, Career Builder, or Monster, aggregators like Indeed and Glassdoor, which pull a lot of content together into their platform from various other si uh, sites or networking sites and social media are also a great channel to get to know about new job opportunities. So this is a great variety, but what it actually causes is a lot of difficulty for job seekers to find out about relevant opportunities. And also it's a challenge for employers to reach the job seekers because the traffic is really spread out. And that was the climate, that was the context in which in uh, 2017, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, announced they would be launching Google for Jobs with one very simple premise, to make job search effortless for candidates by displaying the jobs from various platforms in one place, directly under the search results of Google, which people use anyway. And of course, there was the other business uh, sentiment behind it to encourage people to stay on Google because the more time they spend on Google, the more ads they are going to click. So what is Google for Jobs really? It is a new job search feature it is something that sits directly under the search results page within Google. It is a job search engine, an aggregator, something that pulls in content from various platforms into one place under the search results. From partnership sites like Total Jobs, other job boards, professional networking sites, career sites as well, which can be indexed by Google for jobs if you allow the technology to run on your career site using the open documentation that's available for everybody. And there are smart algorithms that ensure that the job seekers would only see, only get to know about the relevant opportunities for them. Now, and uh, this is a technology that at the moment is available, when we look at EMEA, uh, in the UK and Spain, with a promised rollout for Germany, France, Ireland, and Portugal, with no confirmed deadline yet, unfortunately. So at the moment, only the UK and Spain have it in the EMEA market. Now that we've talked about theoretically what is Google for Jobs, let's actually check it out. How does it look? So if you look at the screenshot on the left-hand side, what I did here is I just typed into the search bar recruitment job rents that source right London. Then what I got immediately is this blue ribbon, the jobs underneath confirming my location search near London. And then the list of opportunities pop up directly under the search. So here there's a a set of smart filters, uh, which can be professional filters, grouping the positions, or when the roles were posted. Uh, what's the category of the opening? Is it a full-time? Is, is it a contractor role? And then um, underneath what you see is the job details. So apart from the more trivial details, such as the job title and the company advertising, I'd like to draw your attention to the bottom part, which is it starts with VIA, VIA Total Jobs, and at the bottom, VIA Rents That Source Right. So that is the original channel on which the ad was posted. Why that is important is because even though Google makes sure you stay on their platform as long as possible, eventually when you want to apply for the job from a candidate standpoint, the traffic would be taken over to the original platform where the role was posted. If you go into the details a bit more in the top right corner, you can see I opened one of our opportunities and then scrolled down to the bottom. So this is information that was not provided by us. This is automatic, um, automatic scraping that's done by Google for jobs. It pulls in pay information, employer reviews, commuting data from various platforms. In this case, what you can see is Glassdoor compensation data is displayed. And then you've got employer reviews from once again, Glassdoor and Indeed. Potentially you could also see pay scale information for compensation. And there's another part, which I'm not showing here on the screenshot that communicates directly with Google Maps to tell you exactly how long you would need to commute for a job. And then the bottom part of the same page, the detailed filters section, 
is something where I clicked title, um, job title, but I could have gone for a location, then was the role posted, was the type of the position. And then what happens here is a smart algorithm recommends me other roles in this particular case that were popular in the London area recently. And then moving on, if you want to actually open Google for Jobs while we are talking and play around with it, all you need to do is follow these simple steps here. So type in an example job into your search bar. And if you don't see uh, Google for Jobs pop up automatically, then all you need to do is set your regional settings right for the region that has Google for Jobs rolled out in it. The way you can do that is clicking search, search settings, sorry, settings, search settings, and then clicking your particular region. And then so far, this may look like there's a connection between other aggregators like Indeed and Glassdoor and Google for Jobs. They might look like they do the same thing. But what I wanted to highlight today is how Google for Jobs actually stands out from the seemingly direct competitors. First of all, we are talking about Google, a platform with more than 3.5 billion searches conducted a day. That's a massive traffic, it's a massive number. So this high visibility, this potential high visibility of placing ads directly under the search results and a combination of ease of use for candidates, which is if I'm on Google anyway, I do my search on the platform. If I see the jobs listed, then I'm not going to go on another platform to try there because it's just so much more convenient for me. With a combination of non-job content, uh, which is something I referred to earlier with the Glassdoor compensation data, uh, comp uh, like employer data, uh, employer ratings, reviews, uh, commuting data, all that is a massive added value for candidates because it saves them a lot of time. It's uh, not manual research they have to do separately. It's in one place. And then there's very sophisticated technology behind Google for jobs. I want to talk a bit more in detail about this sophisticated technology. In order to jump into it, we will need to first understand the basics of search, the basics of how a search engine works. Don't worry, it's not going to get too technical, but two terms that I think we definitely need to tackle are crawling and indexing. So to put very simply, crawling is the act of finding out about new web pages which are added to the web. If Google search engine did not crawl, any of the websites, those particular websites would not pop up under the search results. Indexing, on the other hand, is a bit more of an in-depth action. It actually scrapes the content, looks at the content of the website and saves the text, images, video, anything that's on a certain website in the so-called Google index, which is a huge database. So the first action, crawling, is what the so-called Google bot is responsible for. You probably recall this funnel visual uh, that's now on the right-hand side of this slide. Uh, I've shown it earlier. This is the act of pulling all this information from different platforms into Google for jobs. That is what the Google bot is responsible for. Why that's important uh, for you to know is because you need to enable the Google bot to run on your career site, for example, so that that information ends up on Google for jobs. And then the other piece of the technology, the other piece of the brain behind Google for Jobs is the Cloud Jobs API. So to give you a very simple example uh, to explain what we're talking about here is if I want a recruiter job, I'm interested in a new recruiter job, then I would need to consider that different companies call a recruiter job different names. So uh, some companies would call it a recruitment business partner. Others would refer to it as talent advisor, talent acquisition specialist. So there's a lot of iterations to the same title. And essentially, the job is going to be very similar. So if you recall the original goal of Google for Jobs, the, the original premise, it was to make search effortless for candidates. In order to provide that quality service, Google had to start grouping the positions together and then grouping the skills together so that there can be a match between the online behavior of a candidate and then the grouped set of roles so that the proper recommendation can be made. There's two ways the Cloud Jobs API helps uh, Google achieve this. The first layer, the so-called occupation ontology or occupation grouping in simple terms, consists of three very simple layers. There's a top layer, which is comprised of 30 broad job categories. For example, accounting and finance, human resources. You can see these are pretty broad, uh, broad categories. 
one step underneath, more than a thousand occupation families are seated, for example, database administrators. And then the final layer, the bottom layer, is more than 200,000 very specific occupations, like a software engineer would be a good example, or following my earlier uh, example I brought up, a talent acquisition specialist would be on, like at this bottom layer. And then the, the second categorization done by the CloudJobs API is the skill grouping, the skill ontology. So one good example would be Spanish fluency. Spanish fluency sits in the category of natural language skills, which is part of the umbrella term communication skills. And this is the grouping that drives Google for jobs from an API perspective. So in short, Googlebot crawls partnership sites and your career site. And if you allow it, that's very important that you have to, it pulls vacancies uh, onto the Google for Jobs platform. The Cloud Jobs API, on the other hand, categorizes your openings into a job family, ontology, and shows it to job seekers who might be interested based on their activity. And there's another term I think we definitely need to talk about when we already discussed search, which is SEO, search engine optimization. It is really the, the process of boosting the visibility of a certain website under the unpaid results of a search engine. So when we prepared for this presentation, um, we decided that SEO could as well be its own webinar. It's such a deep topic. So what we wanted to give you today is three very simple tips that you can take away with you that can help your site rank higher. The first one, we call it to follow the hummingbird. So what, what does that mean? In 2013, Google launched its so-called hummingbird algorithm update to its search engine. So before, to give you more like a historical uh, point of view, before Hummingbird, uh, in order for your site to rank high under the search results, it was enough to position certain keywords smartly and then get a higher ranking. But after Hummingbird, the entire SEO market changed. And now Google, Google search engine is about the content. So your content has to be very much focusing on a niche, talking about a certain set of topics within an industry, within a topic, and then be as thorough about your topic as possible. So just a high level overview is going to end up uh, decreasing your ranking among the search results. The second tip is you need to work on your title tag and meta description. We added the screenshot at the bottom right corner to explain which part is which. Now, this screenshot was taken from the search results page of Google. And the top, uh, the blue line there, the blue text is the title tag and below that, the meta description. So let me put myself in the shoes of a regular user. If I search for Rancid Source Right Job, United Kingdom or London, then, uh, which I did for this example, then what, what, if you think about it, what results would you click? Results which have none of those words or results which have all those words potentially in both the title and the meta description? Well, definitely the latter. So here, this result came from our career site and it is something that I would click because it was exactly what I was searching for. So that's very important. On the other hand, what I have to highlight here is <laughs> unfortunately it's not enough to, to spam the meta description with the right keywords because that will immediately result in a very low ranking. So the keywords you put in need to be easy to read and they need to flow in a sentence. And then the third tip is we recommend that you sign up for the Google Search Console. It is free to use, you just need to register, and then it gives you a lot of information about, for example, impressions. You can monitor impressions. What are impressions? If you look at the search results under the Google search um, page, but you don't click anything, you just see the results, like the screenshot on the bottom right, uh, that is an impression. And then what the Google Search Console can help you with is track how much of those impressions, how many of those impressions actually got converted over to real traffic over to your website. And then here's another thing that ties back directly into tip number one, which is it helps you understand which keywords generated the highest number of impressions so that you can take it back to step number one and rework your content, including those keywords. So that is, that is a very important addition when we talk about search. And then yeah, I pass and over to, to Francesca. 
Yeah, and, and uh, you know, yesterday we were just looking at the presentation and deciding uh, how it, fl- it was in our mind, what was important and what not. And uh, it was just yesterday that we thought, uh, I've done this uh, for the last uh, 15 years, but we thought uh, the real danger here is when a different approach to technology comes in place, uh, a change in behavior has to come in place. So probably 14, 15 years ago, we wouldn't have had any behavior on social media platform because there were no social media platforms. It changed the behavior of people. So the, the real opportunity here, but also the, 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 the danger is that if a talent acquisition function doesn't change the behavior in relationship with the technology and the disruptiveness and the way technology links to each other um, work, uh, it's going to be a damage. So three points here that are very important in change of behavior. First of all, uh, I remember doing taxonomy and ontology and uh, clustering jobs uh, in, in job family like five years ago at Lloyd's Banking Group, and then the first thing I did when I was working at Deloitte. So start and think about your website and your clusters of job already in that way, because if you already to put the right keywords, you will already will work in the direction of the clustering of job families or talent pools. So just to give you a practical example, we at Deloitte, I'll, I'll talk about Deloitte because it's, it's my my last memory of a job before this one. We had uh, all the jobs were organized on the career website by business unit. So I had a lot of technology jobs under risk advisory, tax, um, and then technology job in consulting technology. And that was very difficult. Google for Jobs was not implemented in the UK yet. So it was very difficult for candidates who wanted the technology career to understand where to go and look to find for a technology job. So we reorganized the career website, social media, recruitment marketing, media planning, events, everything, communication, advertising behavior, we reorganize it by job family, and all the technology jobs were under the technology label. It doesn't matter that it comes from diverse business units, because that's the taxonomy and the way your business is organized. But for the candidates, all they care about is, A, is it a technology job? Which technology, what will I do? And then, of course, where do I sit in the business? Am I sitting in consulting or am I sitting in tax? But it's not the first information they look at. Now, Google will force you to do that. Because even if you give it uh, the wrong name or it's not aligned on your career website, uh, it will start and understand the content and really put you in the right cluster. If you're not ready for it, First of all, your recruiters will be confused because they will have probably different uh, application from people that uh, fit that job 80%, but traditionally wouldn't have fit that job, if it makes sense. So you will see that the candidates behave in a certain way and your recruiters instead will still go by checklist, uh, business unit, uh, uh, department, and then the job family. So it really changes uh, if you cannot change your website or the way you cluster your jobs, at least help recruiters to change the behavior and make sure that all the recruiters aligned to business unit that are dealing with the same job family should connect, even have the same CRM if it's possible, or at least exchange candidate because that will be the behavior that the candidates will have. And then on the other side, it makes sense anyhow, because why would you want to start from the bottom and get three people aligned to a business unit wanting to do the same job instead of getting all the technology people and then dividing them by sector, by business unit. Um, so in reality, this makes sense. We, we we piloted this, what was it, six years ago at Lloyd's Banking Group. And just to give you some data, we had the result like 14,000% increase from, for, for certain jobs that were hidden in a way the candidate could not understand that it was their job. 
To give you another practical example, I have done in my life uh, consumer marketing, uh, marketing, employer branding, and I've done HR as well. So I've uh, explored that because I wanted to understand better for my job what HR was. I've done talent management, learning and development. What kind of candidate am I? Do I fit in which uh, cluster? Probably I fit in two or three or four clusters. If uh, you look at it from uh, the big point of view, you can really reach uh, those people that have got different uh, behaviors and different capabilities. So my advice really, technology, you know, fix uh, the technology side, make sure that you've got Google bot, that your uh, job description are optimized for Google for jobs. All of this is the technical stuff, but what worries me the most, uh, will uh, your talent acquisition expert be aligned with something that is coming and honestly so that was uh, and again we really wanted to flag this to you because uh, people focus on technology and not what does it mean from a or from a behavioral point of view having said that and i'm sorry if i talked about it too much but i'm very passionate about behavioral change when technology changes i will just briefly walk you through your uh, main asset. So this, again, this Google for Jobs and all of the technology that are changing around smart recruitment and looking at things from the eyes of the candidate, it's quite a good wake up call. And uh, we should have known this from the start that uh, really job description and career uh, website are your main uh, asset and channel. I've always found uh, a bit uh, risky and I've always challenged back when company I worked for a company I consulted with came to me and said oh we want an amazing social media campaign we want uh, go to go on TV or we want to do a very sophisticated uh, job board or recruitment marketing campaign and their job description and the website were really weak let's take away the fact that maybe even their story was weak so the employer value proposition, employer branding, the integration between attracting people and then talent managing people and making them feel that the promise was real. Let's even take away that. But even the simple career website and job description, which are your main assets in recruitment marketing, were weak. And I find that the main risk a company have when they think about talent attraction they invest a lot of money or they are advised by agency to invest a lot of money on very sophisticated uh, um, very sophisticated intervention like podcasts or or assets like that and their job description are weak targeted wrongly for the wrong kind of people with the wrong messaging uh, with the wrong structure not optimized for seo or for the candidate uh, expectation not optimized now for Google for job, but so it, it's really, if you have to invest in something, invest on behavioral change and invest on job description and career website. And, and really, one of the very simple, uh, I thought, what, is, what are the main points uh, you can really follow as a compass uh, to navigate uh, how to make job description better? It's really simple and common sense, actually. So make sure that all the information the candidate wants are there. I've seen in my life things that would make uh, the eyes of any recruiter bleed, like uh, incomplete fields or comments in job description that were published with, uh, we need to add this bit uh, or uh, salary to come. So really job description should be a focal point and the education of hiring manager of job description is a focal point because they have to understand that the job description is not for them, it's, uh, it's for the candidate because you really need to create a relationship between you and the candidates you want to attract. Job titles, do it smart and clever, something that means or something, don't use the jargon that you use in a different business unit or different area or different location. Use a job title that it's already the aggregator of what job uh, uh, Google for Job would do for you. Do it from the start so that it, it's simple for you as well. Of course, optimize it for Google for Job and uh, SEO. Linked with your identity, don't use uh, 
random uh, words or words that you think are attractive uh, and could work for any company. Especially Google for Job will strip away all your brand identity, so you will they, you will not see your visual brand. So your words will be your identity and your culture. So invest in writing job description that really showcase who you are, what is your promise, what are your values, what's your corporate identity, and then write them through the eyes of the candidate. So step back, read it. If I was a candidate interested in this role, would I understand what it means? Would I understand what it is? Would I understand if it could be flexible working? Really put yourself in the shoes of the candidate. Marketing people, normal consumer branding, uh, does it every day, you know, retail, uh, fast consuming uh, goods. They um, have understood that, that their client and their final customer is the most uh, important stakeholder. We should do exactly the same. And then I'm not going to go through the details because I don't want to bore you to death, but I've put here and we will send you this slide uh, in after after this meeting after this call really some little suggestions on how to make it uh, more effective uh, more engaging uh, and really build uh, the desire uh, for candidates to, to to apply to the job right again i've put some bullet points and some more uh, advice of how to make it uh, really strong from the eyes of the candidate. And here I just want to underline something. I've always been, uh, since when I was an academic and taught at university in my previous life, um, I've always been fascinated by diversity, inclusivity. I'm an anthropologist, so I really am fascinated by how different tribes, and we can say the gender tribes, the ethnicity tribe, the introvert expert tribes, so the different kind of people, use a different language uh, and uh, have got different cultures. But what I'm seeing uh, in the modern times or currently happening in the diversity and inclusion uh, space really scares me. There is this tendency of let's not use male words, uh, let's use female words, let's use technology that uh, replaces our way of naturally talking with the gender kind of uh, intervention. It, it's all very artificial and sometimes when you read the job description that has gone through these technologies, it looks like a Google Translate having translated from an alien language to English or whatever is your language. And, and it doesn't really make sense. So what you need uh, my, my personal advice, what you need to avoid is the stereotypical words, uh, the gender uh, in the stereotype of uh, the society and the culture that you work in and that you live in. Use uh, focus on words that are linked to your identity, to your values, uh, to your uh, work environment. Uh, but don't, you know, it, it's, it's really become embarrassing a little bit to see this obsession of trying uh, to use words that don't make any sense to human beings. So this is just my personal opinion, of course, but I thought I would share it because that's what we're doing here, sharing also our personal experiences. And just to give you an example, at Deloitte, but I've done it in all my other companies, uh, we had, for example, cyber roles or uh, forensic technology words, which are very, appealing to male statistically, and they were struggling uh, to attract the female candidates. So just by rewriting the job description, using cultural word of Deloitte, their own identity role, the values they believed in, and avoiding stereotypes, but without uh, putting the stereotypical female words or take away the stereotypical male words, we, had the, we did the pilot AB, the, all the job description and the rewritten one by me, human being rewriting, uh, no technology, and it was 186 more female candidates applying uh, to the rewritten job description. So again, another uh, advice, if you have to invest money before doing the big campaign, really do some copywriting, uh, diversity, understanding of culture and identity, really focus on the words you use.
And again, I'm very passionate about this subject, so I apologize if I put a l- more time and passion on this uh, subject. And again, now to give you just an example, what Google for Jobs, going back to Google for Jobs, what Google for Jobs is looking at, so they will scrape and uh, you will rank high against your competitors or against similar jobs in the same job family, so you're not competing anymore with your industry. You're competing with everybody that is searching for technology people. And that uh, is another danger because Google for Job will not make difference of technology in professional services, technology in banking. It will be lower ranked. What is really important is the job and the job family belongs to the soft skills, uh, the job description. So you are competing with many more people. So to rank higher and to be displayed apart from uh, tag your website and using the right job boards in the right way and rewriting your job description, you need to really put some elements like location, the name of the company, the job require, uh, requisition number, uh, the, the type of contract uh, and uh, the, the date it was posted, the salary. If you don't put the salary, you will be taken from Google Job for jobs anyhow, but they will put what their average salary they've got from aggregating all the data. So be careful because it might say more than what you're offering, or it might say, you know, it will influence how candidates then perceive your offer. So check uh, what Google for Job has indicated that average salary to be before making an offer to candidates. It makes it more complex for them, for them employers, but it, make it, it makes it fairer, more just, and simpler for candidates. And at the end of the day, it, it's quite, uh, you know, quite fair. So we, we should accept it and just uh, embrace it. And again, it's a change in behavior. It's not just the technology. Last uh, really thing from us, there is a, a, a test tool uh, that you can use uh, to ensure that uh, everything is uh, been checked, everything is working, and your job description is written well, you are picked up in the right way. So there are technical tools uh, that the more technical people in your team can really use uh, to make sure everything is optimized. So that's it for us. Again, I, I was telling you earlier, we didn't want to just talk for an hour. We wanted to give space uh, to questions. So, and a couple of more slides very quickly. First of all, Google for Job, uh, if this is your sourcing mix, and uh, don't look at the percentage. This is uh, based on my experience, but it depends from your company, your demand, the fragmentation of your target audience. Uh, the location. So this is just my experience. It changes for every in any in, in every single case. But Google for Job will not just affect your direct application. So people finding your vacancies on Google for Jobs and applying. It will affect your programmatic. It will affect your media and social media investment. It will affect your sourcing and headhunting. So it could reduce if used smartly. It could reduce your media cost your programmatic cost, it could reduce your sourcing and headhunting, which is quite uh, you know, resource intense and cost intense. So if you use it well, it could really benefit you as well from a cost point of view and effort, dispersion of effort point of view. And then really last thing, uh, the most important disruption of Google for Job is the salary transparency, which uh, is already on Glassdoor, but not everybody uses Glassdoor and not every country uses Glassdoor. Google for Job, like Peter was saying, it's nearly part of our, uh, our being. You know, you, when you talk to people, you say, just Google it. You don't say search for it. It's become part of our life. So people will see salaries. So think about how you position your salaries and then really help your recruiter to understand that it will not be just by little businesses or little teams or the single hiring manager, but people will start to behave by job family and your recruiter should be connected and organized that you've got an, an insight uh, on-site team, that you work with a talent uh, partner, uh, 
however you're organized, make sure that they are ready for it because that will be probably the biggest, for me, it's the biggest opportunity, but it's also the biggest risk. That's it for us. The floor is all yours if you've got any question or experience or observation. One of the questions that we received from uh, more than one participant is how do we enable Googlebot to run on our career website? Peter, do you want to take this? Yes, I think the, the best answer for this, as soon as we send over the webinar content for you, we are going to also add the link to the official Google website, which explains step by step exactly what you have to do. Why we want to do that with you is because it's a really intricate process. And we think that the most official um, explanation comes from Google in this case. So that's going to be part of the webinar content that will be sent over to you. Yeah, and you, and you probably will need uh, someone technical in your team uh, to do it uh, the first time. Yes, definitely. While I'm talking, I get a question privately. So I only see the private questions <laughs> for your information. Okay, so if, uh, if there's any more questions, please read those out for us. So Matt is asking if uh, the information, the non-job info that I showed when we looked at the Google for Jobs screenshots, such as employer reviews, salary, is that something that I searched for separately or was it part of the results? And yes, it was part of the results within Google for Jobs itself. So that's it. that is something that's pulled in by the algorithm automatically. And that's something that Francesca referred to as well. For example, that salary is not something that we put out there. It's something that automatically landed in the platform. So if you want to uh, manage candidates' expectations correctly, then we definitely recommend that you post your own salary. Thank you, Peter. Another question. If you don't have a career site, can you still make use of Google for Jobs? Definitely. Yes. Francesca, you want to? Yeah, you, you can because um, you can use uh, job boards. Uh, you, it's, does it, Peter, does it script? No, it doesn't script it from the ATS. It does not. It does, it does not. not. But it does scrape any, I'm not sure, can I get the control back? Yeah, of course. All yours. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Just there it is. Brilliant. Let me quickly go back a bit in the deck to this. So here's a couple examples of partnership sites like Total Jobs, LinkedIn, Facebook, Career Builder, Monster. Read is part of it. I did not put it on the screenshot. Payscale, Glassdoor. So even if you don't have a career site, these pages and your ads posted on these platforms would still end up on Google for jobs. So that's the good news. And why I definitely wanted to highlight that your career site is scraped as well is because that's something the other aggregators don't typically do. So this is something where you can let Googlebot run on your own site and then get, get higher ranking with your own content as well. And in a way, even if you've got the website and these channels, you can use Google for Job for campaigns. So let's say that you've got all of your vacancy on your career website, but you're struggling to recruit this particular niche or talent pool. If you use all these other channels and everything is optimized, in a way, it will be like a forced programmatic approach in which some of the jobs will be pushed higher. So it's also how you use all of these resources uh, to push more where you need to be pushed more. It will be confusing at first, but uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it's quite a cool uh, technology. Thank you both so much. Okay, we are receiving a lot of questions. Uh, another one. What if the job ad is written in English, and let's say that the candidate is German, and types the words in the search in German? What happens then? What do you do? Do you only have the job ad in uh, English? Do you use German keywords and English keywords? Do you have two job ads? What exactly do you do? Peter, do you want to take this one? I think making creating separate ads when it comes to different countries is definitely a smart direction. Not only because from a linguistic standpoint, the, the message changes drastically if you form it in a different language, but also it will resonate a lot more. The, the, 
specific example that you're reading to me, Matilda, with German language, that, that's a very good example because uh, Germans will highly prefer reading their ads in German compared to, to English. So their engagement rates are going to be much higher if they read, read the ad in their native language. So that's, that's my point of view. What I would do is I would post the ad in several languages uh, depending on what regions you're hiring uh, for, for that particular. Um, and, it, it, and, and just to add that what Peter is saying, it really depends from the culture of the country. So for example, in Germany, it might be that they prefer German. In Italy, and I'm Italian, so I, I can talk about it a little bit. In Italy, it's not really a differentiator. It's um, nearly super cool to see an ad in English, but again, they will search probably for Italian words. So it always makes sense to have uh, the whole suite uh, by location. Meanwhile, I'm getting questions privately as well. One of the questions is um, about which browser actually supports Google for Jobs. To my understanding, it's uh, not taking into account what browser you use, it should be part of the Google search results page. So if you don't see the jobs, that can be contributed to. Let me just go back to that slide where I explain what steps you need to take. So if you are based in another location at the moment, not in the UK or Spain within EMEA, or not in the US for that matter, where it's already live, then what you need to do is quickly come in here under the search results page, settings, search settings, and then under the region settings, you please need to enable United Kingdom or another region where the tool is already live. Then when you return back to your search, you should see this blue ribbon pop up with jobs under the results. And then there's another question I'm getting here which is um, how does Google sort the results? Is it purely based on a relevance to your search or is there a factor for the quality of the advert information included with it? Well, definitely uh, there's a massive uh, quality element. I think Francesco can take that part of the question, Francesco, if you want to, but uh, reflecting on the first part, how Google generally uh, displays a uh, result to you. Google also takes into consideration your behavior patterns, your usage of Google's search engine is factored into it because they want to understand what you're interested in. And then, then the second part is what Francesca is going to explain, part SEO, part how your advert is phrased. Yeah, it's, it's and also how complete are your fields. So, so Google for Jobs tells you and I've put them in, in one of the slides later on, it gives you how to get your job ranked higher. So beyond the content, beyond the quality, that will mostly influence if people will click on it or not. But to get higher, ranked higher, for example, having salaries, jobs that will have location, address, salary, a posting date, reference to the, the, the job posting. So when they are complete uh, and they give all the information that candidates would like to see, they will rank higher. So it's a combination between quality and checklist. And I, there was a slide later on in the pack that gives you all of the criteria that Google for Job uses for ranking. Thank you. Some more questions for me? Um, are there any costs associated with Google for Jobs? If not, do you think Google will be monetizing their aggregator? There are, uh, I'll, I'll take it briefly, and then Peter, please uh, do add uh, if, if, uh, if uh, you've got even more information than I do, which is very probable. Um, it's um, no, in the sense that the cost uh, is just uh, somebody to make sure that you have got the right tag in your website. If you can do it in-house, it's even better. The cost is more the effort to really think at your job description in a clever way and use them uh, not just as we have to do it because we have to put job adverts out, uh, but really thinking strategically that that's your now one of your biggest marketing channels and assets. It was before as well, but this forces you to do it even more. And uh, you cannot pay to go on Google for Job, but there are third-party providers 
that will sell you solution to get your jobs uh, ranked higher, but that's just uh, for teams and companies that don't want to invest to understand it and to really do changes uh, internally. For the rest, uh, no, I don't think there are uh, any cost if you upskill your team. Peter, you want to? I agree. No, I yeah? fully agree. I fully agree. And literally the only cost okay. I, I would have, <laughs> I would have <laughs> foreseen as well is if you pay a consultancy that helps you set up the ads instead of training your own team doing that. So meanwhile, I'm getting pointed uh, to the fact that other browsers might not actually display Google for Jobs content. Some, some people listening in have been trying other browsers. So we are a Google-based company. Uh, our entire infrastructure uses Google, and uh, we did use Google Chrome for putting this presentation together. So then um, what we recommend is, um, based on the feedback that I'm getting now, is that you please download Google Chrome and uh, then try your hands at um, Google for Jobs there. Matt is asking if Google for Jobs could eradicate the need for posting on multiple platforms, such as Monster, Read, Total Jobs. Yes, and that's why not com I want to go there one second to the sourcing. Uh, um, mix. That's why I was talking about the fact that Google for Job is impacting the cost and the effort on a lot of your part of the source mix. So yes, you could invest less in media and social media from a job point of view. Maybe you use them, you use social media more for real brand engagement, for real building the relationship, what social media should be. 80% of the company use social media just as a window to talk about the same things they talk about on job boards, on website, on uh, official channels. So it gives you the freedom to use social media for what is meant. So engagement and relationship and brand awareness can reduce your cost on job boards uh, because they will go on Google for jobs, uh, can reduce your cost of programmatic because it's nearly a programmatic platform led by them and uh, and even your direct application effort yes it does impact eliminate no also because remember it's just uh, the uk and spain in emea and uh, it's not global yet and behaviors of candidates have, has not changed dramatically yet but in two three years time might be that's what google does and other companies like Google. They change the way people behave. So in short, yes, but not now. Uh, meanwhile, I'm yep. getting another one, which is about um, whether it's, it's possible to post directly on Google for jobs. And it's not. It's not yeah. possible because we are talking about basically a scraping service of other platforms. And then the second second part of the question I'm getting is just like on Indeed. So the thing with Indeed is, in fact, you can't post on Indeed either directly. What happens is you get a higher ranking among Indeed results if you directly send over your ad to them. But it's still going to be a scraping activity that they do. That's part of their engine. Thank you, Peter. Oh, one last question for now. We, we keep receiving questions. We will surely answer those privately, uh, but it's, it's 12. So the very last question for now, can you customize what is displayed? Can you turn off salary information? No. 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 You can decide what to put uh, on, your, uh, on your job ad, uh, and you can decide if the salary that comes out on Google for job is your actual one because you have put it there, or it's the aggregator of uh, average salary in that uh, job that Google does for you. Yeah. So basically, if you add a salary yourself, then that salary is going to be displayed. But if you don't, what Google for Jobs does is it goes out of its way to find that information on Payscale, Glassdoor, or any other similar compensation benchmarking site and automatically add a snapshot of that compensation, which might not be realistic 
And that's why we recommend that you rather consider putting your own benchmark out there because you might as well uh, end up in the situation that a candidate comes in and says, so uh, this is, these are the figures that I've seen on Google for jobs, uh, and now what you're telling me is something below this range. So why is that? And then it's a really awkward conversation suddenly. Yeah, especially with companies in the same industry because they can be compared. People can apply to multiple companies that are very similar and they can immediately tell who's paying more. Wow, and we are still receiving questions. It's an extremely interesting topic, of course. Uh, we reached the one hour point, so I would really like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, thank you, of course, Francesca and Peter for the great insight. Uh, we will be reaching out to the individuals that had questions that were not answered right now. And of course, we will be also sending the recording as well as the presentation tomorrow. And the thank instructions you very to the much. Google bot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll be part of it. Thank you so much. We had Thank so much you, everybody. fun. We love technical stuff. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.